Hi there, Andrew Jackson, OJ Design Studio. Got another uh, SolidWorks video. This time, I'm looking at how you can make a um, a deformed or a curved mesh um, in SolidWorks. So maybe just to represent a uh, a mesh, you know, rather than an actual um, part, because this is it's a little bit lumpy and stuff. This sort of technique I've come up with, um, but it's uh, it's taken me a bit of time. Something I've been Meaning to um, look at for a while because I've got this microphone in my office um, with a completely dome top that runs down into a circular element around the bottom. So this isn't quite um, as uh, deformed as that, but I wanted to try and uh, do this and have nice straight sweeps um, in the mesh rather than making a, a um, easy way would be to make a, a uh, a flat mesh and then try and deform it but of course um, you deform it in SOLIDWORKS the actual section of your um the wire mesh would change as well so in this technique I've, I've made a, a tool basically and then created these sweeps along that tool the tool was deformed and then the sweeps created afterwards um, so I'm just going to um, um, whip through this quickly um, and if anybody wants the file, we yell out, and I can I can upload it. Um, okay, I'll just roll back to the beginning. So uh, seriously, I'm just going to run through this very quickly. So I created a a um, spline, which is the control for the for the pitch and the wavelength. Um, dimensions don't mean anything. I just threw some big dimensions in there. Okay, and then I've created a one millimeter line on the end, which I'll use to create a sweep. The sweep has then been patterned, linear pattern, um, and I want to convert entities to the top of all the um, waves and turn them into a single spline. So I've knitted those together. I've created another sketch here. I converted entities the tops of all the surfaces there by right clicking and going select open tangency, convert entities, and then tools, spline tools, fit spline with the 0.01 millimeter uh, tolerance on the spline. And then I've recreated this wave in a sweep again, but using that um, that um, fit spline, approximate spline. Uh, so now I've got a wave that's got no breaks on there, so I can run a sweep along there without having to pick lots of entities as a path. Okay, now I'm going to create the four waves I need. Um, so I've just added some move bodies here, which position, oops, position, position the spline and rotate them. So they line up with my um, origin. They sit on my um, right plane, my front plane. Okay, so that's that single spline, but it's been mirrored to flip it that direction and then um, transformed, rotated, and then moved across. That makes sense. So that was rotated and now shifted over 15 millimeters, which is okay now I've patterned these because I'm going to create a um, tool surface which is a boundary surface in each direction um, because the boundary surface is going to be going let's hide one direction boundary surface is going to be running through the tops of all these um, ribbons I I want nice hard edges between each, so I've created a 3D sketch along one end, which I use in the second direction, in this boundary sketch. So I'll just edit it quickly, show you what I've done. So those patterned um, ribbons picked all the edges, and in the second direction, boundary surface. If I was to get rid of that, um, 
as you can see it's all smooth now which means i don't have those edges which is what i need for my um tool because I, I i'm going to deform this boundary surface to create the sort of dome shape i don't want to have to deform each one of these ribbons um could be a bit of a nightmare so i've done the same in the second direction you can see there so there's my tool surfaces I'll just hide these ones. Okay, right, so next step is deforming that. So created a sweep. Um, the sweep on the path here is the same length, which is that length dimension on the arc, same length that is here. Imagine this is coming down, folding down, forming downwards. Um, second direction, I've done the same thing. Except now, instead of this drooping down here, um, I want this edge to be shorter than this edge here. Um, if you look at a mesh, oh, the, the gap between each um, wire will get smaller when it's deformed, so it's squashed. So I've created some planes plane here, uh, normal to the end point of that arc, and then trimmed, see here, trimmed off this long droopy corner here, so trim those back, so that length, instead of being 105mm at the top here, is compressed down to 86 okay, so the wires get closer together. Uh, next up I'm going to create a surface plane on the top. It's there. Hide my tool surfaces quickly. Okay. Um, and I'm going to create a uh, split line through the middle of each of these uh, as another um, curve to use to control the um, deform. So I just created a, a plane and then split line. Okay. So now I'm going to create the deform, which I've already done, but I'll roll into there. You can see the, the deform, it's not evenly, sort of, these peaks and troughs aren't evenly above my, um, my control sort of surface of the sweep here. Um, there's a few reasons why that is. Um, so I've got five sets of edges so that planar face i had up here got edge deforming down to the edge of the sweep next one is the end edge of that control planar surface i made and then the uh lower edge of the um sweep which has been trimmed back same here and then fourth boundary is over here and then the fifth control set is the split uh, lines i put in just before so the edge through the middle here then the edge through the middle of the um sweep um you know i've mucked around i've stuck in extra control curves here and and what have you to try and make this fuller in this area because it's sort of it's very flat you can see those are dipping down below the surface um did that but then it would make some of the undulations weird in other spaces um also tried using the surface tangent tools and mucking around with everything so um you know if you had the time to, to mess around with this you might be able to get a better result but for the purpose of this i think it's okay I'm sure you can get it better. So that's rebuilding the deformation. Okay, so our tooled surface is now deformed. Um, you can see that bit of a peak there. So now I've basically just gone through um, along each of these. Insert surface. Sweep, circular profile, like that, empty dimension, done. Okay, 
um, you can do this with solids, um, because the solids were merging together into a single body, it was because there was a slight interference with, um, with the uh, wires going in the two directions. I've, I've just used surfaces just to speed this up. Okay. You can see here I've populated the second direction. Surfaces. Um, and then mirrored them over twice. One, two. To create a new second now. Here we go. Right, I'll just turn off the uh, tool surface. Yeah, I know I've got a million and one surfaces in there, but yeah. Um, again, I, I tried this earlier using solids and ended up with one solid body, um, which you could then run a circle around and trim back or, or whatever. So, yeah, I was, yeah, probably good enough for rendering or something like that. Um, as a placeholder, um, if you have an assembly, instead of having just a, a dome surface, you could create a an actual mesh um, and seems to be flexible ish. Uh, like if I change the dimensions on, change the radius here on my sweep control and then hit rebuild. Should get a bit tighter. Yeah, so the key to this technique is being able to control that deformation of the tool surface. Um, I'm sure there's another way you probably you can approach this in our SolidWorks, but yeah, so there you go. So I've increased the curvature. Um, still a bit peaky along here, but again, I'm fairly happy with that. It's probably much better result than if you made it flat and then deformed it because your, your cylinders would um, get deformed and not your cylinders, your circular profile. Um, and not only would they get deformed, uh, I think it would be um, pretty heavy processing to to uh, rebuild it. So uh, again, if anybody wants this, just leave a comment and I'll upload the file. Um, otherwise, I hope this is useful. Okay, thank you very much, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.